thank you, Robert, and kind of introduction. And uh, uh, again, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Nabe Watanabe. I'm a researcher, and I'm uh, currently working in the Japanese think tank, Tokyo Foundation. That's uh, uh, kind of, kind of very unique because. I, as you may realize, there, there's no, not so many independent think tanks in Japan. Uh, several think tanks is a government affiliated. Several think tanks uh, belong to the bank or financial institution. So I think uh, uh, the Tokyo Foundation is uh, kind of unique uh, because uh, financially pretty much independent. Uh, the all profit, uh, I'm not that original endowment money is coming from a profit of a motorboat racing. So, <laughs> so that's very stable actually. And uh, the, that money goes to the, the Nippon Foundation, that's the largest Japanese charity organization. And the Japanese charity organization decided to have an endowment for the independent uh, policy research study. That was 1997. And at that time, uh, I was in Washington, D.C., working in the U.S. Think independent think tank, the Center for Strategic International Studies, and uh, had a study group with uh, uh, like-minded Japanese. Oh, Japan needs uh, this kind of independent think tank in the future. And uh, several of my friends really tried to uh, the found the uh, uh, Tokyo Foundation. At that time, I was uh, in uh, Washington, D.C., I didn't dream of I would work in, in the future, but uh, so eventually I settled down. So I'm enjoying. I'm uh, uh, in charge of uh, directing a foreign security policy in, at the Tokyo Foundation. So that's me. And uh, I appreciate that so many uh, people joined, and, uh, including uh, several uh, friends, actually, in Washington. Uh, Robert was one of my old friends. Uh, we worked uh, uh, occasionally uh, at the, in the Washington Think Tanks world, and uh, several people actually that uh, used to be in uh, Washington with me and uh, joined here, so thank you. And uh, uh, today I, I'm talking about uh, Japan's uh, security policy. Uh, but, uh, I'm not going to detail. Detail should be the more q and a. But uh, I'd like to talk about a uh, uh, kind of a rational for Japan's uh, foreign security policy uh, the recently. Because uh, you know, sometimes uh, Prime Minister Abe's policy could be exaggerated or somehow misunderstood. Uh, both directions. Uh, like uh, some worried people, like uh, uh, South Korean people or Chinese people tend to exaggerate uh, what uh, Abe is doing with uh, too much. Too, too, too much, uh, the, uh, the too active or too aggressive. On the other hand, some expectation from uh, uh, the the uh, 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 people expert is like, oh, Abe can do a lot. Like uh, Japan ha has done actually the little for the international cooperation in in the security activity. Uh, probably Abe may do uh, much more. I you know the both are uh, wrong to predict. The reason is uh, simply it's not so easy to change uh, the government policy. And especially security policy, we really need to be careful to move. So today's topic is uh, how Japan is uh, trying to shift the uh, uh, security policy from very old restricted one to the less restricted one. But uh, at the same time, the Japan should be very careful, especially the, uh, the avoid the security dilemma, especially Japan and China. So I think uh, the, for, to attain such a security dilemma, probably Japan need to be very careful to conduct uh, the direction of a policy. So I'm trying to not to disappoint the both side. Some, <laughs> so right, uh, I try. And uh, probably we could uh, talk a detail about uh, uh, the, um, uh, the Q&A session. First of all, I'd like to start with uh, what is the proactive contributions to peace of uh, Abe administration? That's actually uh, it's in the National Security Strategy document uh, in uh, 2013, uh, December. Uh, let me read. As a pro proactive contributor to peace based on the principle of international cooperation, Japan will play an active role for peace and the stability of the international community through the following approaches. Strengthening uh, diplomacy at the uh, United Nations, 
strengthening the rule of law, leading international efforts towards the disarmament and non proliferation, promoting international peace cooperation, and promoting <coughs> international cooperation against the international terrorism. And uh, uh, were several sim symbolic uh, the speech by the Prime Minister Abe. Uh, on May 6, uh, last year, 2014, at the North Atlantic Council, Prime Minister Abe said uh, uh, the one, one objective of his proactive contribution to peace policy is uh, to play a bigger role in defending freedom of uh, overflight, freedom of navigation, and other global commons. And uh, uh, several the actors uh, acted uh, as a, the uh, uh, um, give a re reaction to the uh, Prime Minister Abe's uh, proactive co the cooperation to the peace. Uh, U.S. President Barack Obama praised Abe for the, his, uh, his uh, exceptional commitment to our alliance <laughs> and telling Abe, uh, Abe, under your leadership, Japan is also looking to make uh, even greater contribution to peace and security around the world, which the United States very much welcome. He said that. And uh, another case is at the Japan ASEAN uh, Commemorative Summit on uh, December 14, uh, 2013. ASEAN leader said in a joint sp statement that uh, they look forward to Japan's proactive contribution to peace for stability and development of the region. That's very positive one. And, uh, you know, I'd like to say uh, that's kind of a vague statement, but now the administration is trying to the change uh, legal infrastructure which related to the such kind of uh, the international activity uh, and also defending Japan. I think. Uh, that's the ongoing issue. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk about the detail the, in the Q&A se uh, ses session. And I'd like to explain. This kind of uh, the attitude, proactive, is uh, not only initiated by Prime Minister Abe. That's very important. That's kind of a consensus of the Japanese security co community. This kind of idea was already shaped in uh, uh, before Abe administration, Noda administration, or even the Khan administration, both are actually DPJ. That's very important because, you know, sometimes uh, the LDP government try to promote, oh, okay, that's our one, and the DPJ government didn't do nothing, or well, the very, very uh, um, 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 as in counterproductive. Now, that may apply to the Prime Minister Hatsuyama, but not for the Prime Minister Noda, I would say. I think. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in the Japanese TV program, I'm assigned to give a comment to the, the former Prime Minister Hatayama on uh, Friday night, 10 o'clock, BS uh, Nippon TV. That's a big job. Anybody <laughs> has a comment over former Prime Minister Hatayama? That's tough one. So uh, I'm reluctant to do that, but uh, uh, I, I'm responsible for something for him. So I will do that. Um, no. Um, the, for example, um, actually, in the Noda administration, just before Prime Minister uh, Abe took office, uh, several initiatives in, uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, the Prime Minister Noda. And the key assigned several experts to figure out the future Japan's uh, uh, policy uh, contribution. Uh, and uh, I was assigned one of the members of uh, such a uh, the, uh, the assignment. And uh, we actually proposed let's change the interpretation of the right of collective defense at that time. And that was reported in uh, the newspaper. But it was not criticized much as uh, compared to the uh, plan that Abe is doing right now. Uh, it's uh, very natural for actually the, the exercise of uh, uh, the right of collective defense if Japan really wanted to play a larger role in the international international uh, the uh, security activity. That's, that's very important, but I think uh, unfortunately the many people, especially the, in uh, the Western um, English media or even Japanese media says that, uh, oh, Prime Minister Abe is uh, trying to change the Japanese uh, the, uh, the peace 
constitution and the, uh, changing to the, the basic principle for, for the, the uh, exclusive defense policy. That's not the case. Even, uh, I think, uh, the, the discussion among the uh, current government, uh, coalition government, LDP and Gometo, it's like a one clear line. Even after change of uh, the right of collective defense, Japan continued to follow exclusive uh, defense policy. That means that Japan would not engage in the assertive, aggressive action in the military. That's why the, I think the Prime Minister repeatedly says uh, against uh, the, the action to change uh, status quo by force. And uh, some cases, uh, uh, first of all, I'm not a big fan of a Prime Minister. Abe. I'm not a big fan of LDP. But the, what, what a current government is uh, doing is a kind of a continuation in uh, the 10 years, 20 years, uh, Japanese government to try to figure out how to, this is not a good word, but normalize, or how to improve the, the too restricted the Japanese uh, uh, self-defense policy. And, uh, it's not an attempt to change self-defense to the uh, completely normal country. It's not really. Article 9, stay, same, no amendment, just simply changing the too much restrictive and the political uh, production of uh, the ban on collective defense to change a little bit more. That, that doesn't mean that uh, new interpretation doesn't allow Japanese government to exercise full right of uh, collective defense, or full right of uh, individual defense. Simply some part of collective defense, some part of uh, uh, individual defense. Why? Because uh, some should be within the framework of uh, exclusively defense policy. Senshu Bowen in Japanese. That's very important. But you know, I think uh, uh, sometimes uh, you reading the Japanese uh, reaction, Japanese uh, newspapers reaction. I think uh, is a uh, uh, as if uh, Abe is uh, changing the Japanese the, the Japanese uh, the principle Article Nine the split, and uh, to change Japan to the completely normal nation. Well, sometimes exaggerate. Oh, Abe is uh, making a war or against the neighbors. That's completely wrong. It's a funny story. I have a high school classmate, and. Uh, uh, I met my high school classmate uh, who happened to see after 20 years of uh, graduating of uh, high school. And her daughter uh, assigned him message to me. Because uh, her daughter happened to my kind of explanation in the TV. And uh, the, my uh, classmate was actually told by the daughter, oh, please tell this guy if you're a friend. This guy is uh, uh, drawing down, dr drawing the Japan to 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 the wall. He's a really dangerous guy, so it, you should contact him. And actually, I got a message from uh, my classmate. My my classmate is actually the don't take my side as a daughter's side. Good things for the family. But, um, um, well, how come Japan somehow the very allergic action to the changing interpretation of art? I would like to explain something with this. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> so, so many men. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Where's going? That's very big trouble. I need this. Do you know what this? Omamori, right. I really need this omamori. My family really want me to have omamori. Why? This has a very superpower to stay away um, any trouble around me. And as long as I hold this, I don't get be involved in any accident or I may never be the killer. Do you believe it? But people somehow feel the bad without this. Because uh, in the past, I have been very safe with this. So I believe this. Same thing applies to the interpretation of uh, Article 9. Japan has been very peaceful 
with the interpretation of Article 9 and Article 9. So people are so afraid of changing this, like this, the, like uh, the leave this to home or without the omamori. So Article 9 and the interpretation is omamori. <laughs> it's serious. You know, this logic is sometimes very difficult to tell my, my classmate, the daughter, of course, because she believes. And she believed, that she believed that change of Article 9 would make uh, Japan more Trump. But the reality is, if Japan don't change Article 9 interpretation and don't have uh, updated uh, security legal system or security policy, I think uh, the, uh, the world situation surrounding Japan is getting worse. That's it. But uh, also, uh, at the same time, of course, Unilateral change without uh, considering uh, surrounding uh, country, especially the concern of China. It's not so good thing. That's my explanation again. Um, driving nation or driving country is like driving a car in a highway. In the highway, you, can, you cannot do three things. One is uh, uh, the rapid speeding up or suddenly stopping was suddenly changing the co course. That's all are different. They're dangerous. So if you really accelerate, you really need to the, the speed to pace up with others. If you are a uh, brake, have a brake, you really need to give a sign to others. And if you, change, you are changing a course, you should let others and watch around and making a sign. That's very important. So, while Japan is changing uh, Japan's defense and security policy course, leading it to the making a uh, reassurance to neighbor. That's actually the, today's a very important point. What is the best way to reassure, uh, reassure China? Or reassure worried neighbors? I think uh, uh, probably the conversation is a very important. And uh, uh, another answer is uh, multilateralism. Yeah, that's in uh, my talk time. Multilateral solution to the security. Of course, that's not a perfect solution. I think uh, I still the believer of uh, alliance. Uh, U.S.-Japan uh, bilateral alliance is uh, the counter, uh, the very important uh, cornerstone of regional stability. But sometimes, if uh, Japan is expanding uh, Japan's uh, the, the area for the collaboration, the cooperation, uh, the Japan's own security, probably sending some uh, uh, negative signal and may cause uh, some security dilemma with China. So that case, probably the multilateralism may be the answer. That I'd like to discuss this. I think uh, uh, my friend, very good international security scholar, uh, Victor Cha, he's a uh, uh, Professor of Georgetown, he wrote a very interesting uh, uh, suggestion. I think uh, uh, in his book, uh, and he actually occasionally talked, um, he, he said uh, um, that uh, multilateralism is uh, somehow in Asia, is uh, very different from uh, a NATO case in uh, Europe. Uh, and uh, but, uh, uh, multilateralism in uh, Asia is not the path perfect, but uh, the potential to create a somehow good mechanism for the security. Um, I'm trying to find a part. Uh, yeah. Uh, he said uh, uh, the, the in the uh, uh, Asia-Pacific region, I think a non-zero-sum solution are clearly possible with uh, the uh, core three assumptions, <coughs> according to Chad. Uh, first, no single institution shall define the region. <coughs> Second, ad hoc institutions work better than formal ones. And third, bilateral and multilateral institutions are uh, mutually reinforcing. That's his assumption. Um, well, of course, he's a great scholar. He can write a very good uh, the chapter of the book. Uh, I think uh, if you're interested in uh, the, uh, I'm going to give you the, the book of title. But, uh, um, I think, uh, uh, for example, he said that 
coexistence of regional multiple security framework give, would give China for space and do not isolate or contain it unlike NATO against the Soviet bloc in the Cold War period. So for Japan, somehow the multilateral setting continued to be the attractive framework and would give Japan uh, somehow the uh, good function. That's one of the reasons why the average of proactive international, uh, proactive contribution, proactive contribution to the uh, peace require the Japan to change uh, the uh, interpretation of the right of collective defense. Because without it, Japan cannot be the full participant in the regional security framework, first of all. And uh, without it, not so easy even to uh, co collaborate with the United States uh, uh, besides uh, the, the Japanese territory and uh, the region surrounding Japan. So now Japan, <coughs> Japanese government is trying to change uh, the concept of uh, the U.S.-Japan activity uh, from uh, pretty much uh, the region surrounding Japan to the more situation, what case. <coughs> That's very important to joining uh, the multilateral security, I would say, architecture in the region. The case is uh, several things. Again, some architecture is uh, uh, Japan and the US can join. Some are only Japan and the Asian uh, neighbors join. Or some are the active framework uh, China join uh, with, with other uh, what other players. And as uh, Victor Cha uh, suggested, China cannot be too much isolated. That's very good to prevent uh, unnecessary security dilemma. Of course, China is a rising nation. China continues to build up military as long as uh, financially uh, can afford, finance can afford. Uh, but, but still, the China uh, has a lot of room for the for the economic growth. But at a certain time, China's the, the military build, build up would have uh, some uh, limit. But we don't know when, unfortunately. And uh, single nations such as Japan or you, even the US cannot afford to continue to have uh, making a good balance with uh, rising China. Probably multilateral collaboration is an effective tool. But, uh, Again, if Japan, the US, and other actors like Australia or India creating an encircling China, that typical security dilemma. Of course, that's sometimes necessary, but not too much. Do we really continue to have a making an effort to include China in the regional framework too? So architecture is a good word, good, good to terminology. It's not only one single multilateral, multilateral ent entity. Several layers, some framework may include some country, but uh, some may not include some. Oh, one hot issue. It's not architecture, but it's a financial architecture. AIIB, very controversial. It, Asian in infrastructure. Structure Investment Bank, AIIB. That's controversial. The reason is that simply that uh, China asked to join. And uh, uh, many regional players hesitate to join first. But uh, after UK joined, I think uh, uh, France, Germany, and uh, 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 South Korea or ASEAN nation all joined, except Japan and the United States. Of course, some people exaggerated this discussion. Oh, China's uh, trying to the challenge to the Bretton Woods. That's that in Japanese paper. That's too much. Because, you know, uh, AIIB is a, a system anyway to finance infrastructure in the regional. Other nature is not so bad. If China tried to ma manage some such kind of a big financial institution, uh, China has to follow financial rule. That would give an opportunity for China to, to play the rule with others too. So what the US and Japan are asking China is uh, uh, show us the, what kind of rule you're going to use. It. Because uh, otherwise China would have a big trouble. Because uh, uh, the big incentive for China is of course to manage their own cash to be effective uh, uh, managed. 
And if money, lending money doesn't be done, that's big trouble. And of course, China would like to contribute to the regional development. That's the thing. Of course, I don't know. I'm not an expert on the financial area. But uh, uh, this kind of architecture, I don't know eventually US and Japan would not join or not. I'm not sure. But I mean, Asian Development Bank, AIIB, somehow, different institutions but purpose is probably the same. Not so bad because the China is not so isolated. Of course, several criticism uh, to Japan, US. Hey, the, since the US Congress doesn't allow the, some, the, the flexible rule in IMF, or Asian Development Bank, uh, China can jump. That makes sense sometimes. But of course, uh, sometimes uh, the, the uh, coexistence of uh, several rules would be very effective. That's my thought. And of course, I, I'm, let me go back to the security area. Um, however, of course, not so easy to create a NATO type of multilateral security government. NATO, NATO was lucky, or that historically uh, uh, times because uh, of the Soviet Union at that time. And uh, uh, Japan's case, or Asia's case, is not so situation is uh, easy. So probably what Japan tried to do is uh, the gradual step to the, the, the joining uh, multilateral framework. Uh, for example, ADMM plus, that's a good uh, idea to have uh, the key regional players, uh, defense ministers uh, discuss the issue. That's more talk show, but uh, that's not so bad. Exchange of information. Or more easy one, Japan can play the role. I, I, I'd like to remind you, what Japan can do even after interpretation of Article 9 of change, or Japan's uh, the new legal structure, what Japan can do in the regional is uh, pretty much limited. I don't think Japan can free join any combatant activity. Uh, Japan is not free, legally or politically or equipmentally. So, uh, for example, joining a non-traditional security, such as a, a humanitarian assistance and the disaster relief, HADL. That's already Japan is joining, too. And uh, the uh, US-Japan collaboration after the uh, uh, Great Eastern earthquake and Operation Tomodachi. I think that both actually have tried to provide uh, uh, the help to the, the several countries, like uh, Philippines, Typhoon Haiyan, or this kind of things. And that's easier for any country can join. Of course, uh, China can join, India can join, and uh, easier to have uh, some the, the habit of a cooperation. And one important one is uh, um, in the history, after World War II history, Japanese self-defense forces had activity in uh, mainland China once. Do you remember that there was a Sichuan greater greater earthquake? At that time, China decided to have a, a Japanese self-defense forces for rescuing the people. That was a little bit old good day be, relation between Japanese and China. But that was possible. China decided to. How re relatively easier to have a non-traditional security area? Especially HADR is uh, easier for this. I don't think Japan can send the self-defense forces now to China soon, but uh, still room for. And Japan, China, and uh, other major, like South Korea, of course, and uh, Australia, India, ASEAN country can do that. What I'm trying to figure is uh, uh, what Abe, Prime Minister Abe is trying to do is not simply all the type of uh, conservative uh, security policy. But uh, uh, th that's clearly continuity in the, the, the security policy organization. And uh, uh, trying to participate in more uh, positively with uh, multilateral collaboration architecture. And the uh, change of Article 9 is very important. It's not just an excuse to the Japan defending more seriously. Well, Japan, um, 
territorial difference is not related to the, any in, uh, Article 9 uh, right of collective defense change. For the, our own defense, there's no problem for the, any, the current existing uh, uh, exercise of uh, uh, right of collective, right of uh, individual defense. Well, um, now the Japanese government is trying to rebuild it the before collective defense. I think the uh, issue is uh, simply uh, the so-called gray zone. Gray zone is uh, not the case. It is the case of self-defense forces is uh, the, uh, I think, allowed to deal with the situation. More law enforcement uh, vessel or law enforcement entity level, like uh, Senkaku. Uh, China, China, China never uh, sent the Chinese naval ship to the Senkaku. The more law enforcement, or sometimes uh, the uh, fishermen. That's clearly not case over uh, the, uh, the military can involve. But nobody, nobody knows uh, such a uh, who, what kind of a uh, if uh, some unidentified people landed in the Senkaku. Nobody knows who. And it's a very difficult for the Japanese government to deal with this, especially self-defense forces to deal with. And uh, I'd like to remind you of uh, uh, what uh, Russia did, the annexation of uh, Crimea. At the time, a black mask guy had a military action. Now everybody understands that's Russian military, but uh, at that moment, nobody knows. So, Unfortunately, Japanese legal procedure and the, the government procedure is not ready for this. That Japan is trying to do. But that's not related to the right of collective defense. That's right of individual defense issue. But anyway, that, that, I, I'd like to stop this and uh, happy to Q&A. Thank you very much, very good because I agree with it, um, <laughs> in that I think, no, seriously, I think one problem is both the opponents and the supporters of Abe have overemphasized change. I mean, if you listen to some of the opponents, you think that the ghost of Kishi is back. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to the supporters, you also think that the ghost of Kishi is back. And I think they're both wrong, because I think, I mean, we, you and I have been working on this for 20 years, and there's a trend line, and actually, the trend line isn't moving very quickly. Um, so I think that's a very good, a good point. Uh, just a public service announcement first. Did somebody forget this? <laughs> okay. okay, good. So, sorry. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll auction it afterwards. Uh, thank you very much. Temple University needs every yen it can get. Uh, we'll start with Q&A. Now, there's a, the procedure for Q&A for logistics is we put a mic. So the good news, you can walk up. Uh, you can listen to now. As you know, we have a camera, so if you're someone who's undercover, uh, rather than walk up to the mic, you can just speak and we'll listen to you, but your, neither your voice nor your image uh, will be recorded for posterity. <laughs> so does this make sense? Okay, so um, who would like to start to ask questions? I mean, I promise now this on the most dynamic audience uh, on this side of the Pacific, so someone has to speak up. Otherwise, I would call the call. Uh, yes, John, because you're not a fellow here, so. So, Nabe-san, um, thank you for your comments. But I don't know what you intended to talk about, but Robert was very nice, and he, he tempted us all. Um, in the abstract, it was published on the internet uh, that there'd be commentary on the revised guidelines. But you never have the revised guidelines. Um, I would not ask you to predict what the revised guidelines might say. Mm -hmm. um, that would, um, there, there's no point in that. The governments are starting to preview them and we'll find out when we find out. Um, but I think it would be really more interesting in the context of what you've just been talking about is um, when they come out and when we read them in the next month or so, uh, what will be, what should we be looking for? What, what are you gonna be looking for that is, is missing is going to be significant to you, uh, or what are the kind of things that might, I can't say surprise you, because you're going to predict them, but what might be in there that you can say, this is there, I wasn't sure it was going to be there, uh, and that's really indicative. You, you mean uh, in the uh, Japanese legal 
change or guideline itself? It, well, I think what would be in the guidelines that would be a trend indicator to you of change or lack of change uh, in um, in the Japanese guideline, in the Japanese, Japanese uh, legal, legal situation? Is it? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, in the Tokyo Foundation, we made a recommendation to the government. Uh, the before national program, uh, national defense program guideline in uh, November 2013. So, and we have a project team watching uh, the how the legal result would reflect to the, our recommendation, and uh, how it's perfect or some, some part is missing. Uh, one probably <coughs> we are focusing on. We don't know yet, but uh, how gray zone is uh, treated? Uh, the, the Japanese government like. Uh, like an expression, seamless. <coughs> seamless means uh, from a peacetime to the, I'm not, the gray zone, from a peacetime to the wartime. And that's black and white, and gray zone. So how this gray zone is uh, the treated very well by legal and practical? That's really tough. Because uh, several approach could be possible. But uh, not so easy to change uh, directly, um, drastically the, the concept of uh, uh, legal preparation for the defense. That may be not so easy, because uh, sometimes it's not a gradual approach. Sometimes a uh, coalition partner comment is not so happy about a big change. That's ongoing issue. So, but still, I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't expect a real perfect solution. It's impossible. We should go some uh, uh, the <coughs> incremental approach somehow. But uh, too slow or too incremental is very dangerous. For example, uh, the gray zone situation. Of course, Chinese realize, according to the, my expert, my friends, who is expert on the Ch PLA. Uh, Ch Ch good news is, and uh, uh, bad news, bad news is that uh, China realized such a shortcomings of Japanese preparation for them in the case of uh, emergency. But good news is uh, China believe Chinese uh, believe uh, Japan would act uh, super legally anyway. And the uh, worst news is that Japan would not uh, act uh, super legally. So we need to preparation somehow. But of course, they will. we don't know. Um, I clearly see the, some improvement in the interim, not interim, some media and some agreement is between uh, uh, LDP and COMET within the coalition government. But I don't think uh, the perfect solution would not because the per perfect solution for the functional level is uh, probably require Japan to change more drastic change of outcome now. Or I would say, uh, some more practice of, of uh, normal nations, normal countries. Like uh, rule of engagement is uh, the clearly uh, the set up with uh, no taboo, with uh, no taboo like exclusive defense limitation or something. And uh, such uh, the, the, the precondition would be allowed in uh, some uh, legal preparation too. But I, I don't think Japan can go to the such level in some that's, that's unfortunate. But uh, no, again, uh, in a sense of uh, reassurance, that would be acceptable, maybe. By the way, um, the gray zone issue was not so fully realized by the ordinary people, or even the, the Japan's counterpart, US side. Too. I think that self-defense forces, uh, the officials who really worked in the, the real case, I think they already shared some trouble. Okay, we have a very troubled legal system. But uh, the overhauling the legal system requires the, the many drastic change of uh, interpretation of Article 9 and uh, somehow concept of a legal interpretation, or well, legal review. Probably next to some missing part is related to this. Maybe. I don't expect a real big drastic Solution, but uh, um, I would see maybe improve the situation clearly. That's better than before. Better than nothing. Somehow halfway, half um half for the water is a half full type. But that's improvement. We need to anyway. We cannot 
make a complete solution to. Another one is that this is a maybe related to the US-Japan <coughs> guideline. I think uh, it's my feeling is, of course, not so easy preparation for between uh, Japan and the US for the case of a uh, gray zone. Gray zone case should be treated by Japan initially. That's good. That's territorial data. But uh, it's good. if gray zone is uh, escalating to the not gray zone, that's target of uh, US-Japan uh, uh, security alliance, uh, security treaty maybe Article 5. So, but how se seamlessly US and Japan prepared before? That's not so easy, right? I think uh, probably it's not a legal issue. Uh, I think a more consulting issue between the US and Japan. That's one thing that we, we expect. Japan to prepare the, the more uh, the uh, Without uh, shortcomings, Japan can prepare the, some full good one. And based on this, Japan talked with the U.S. counterpart how to deal with it. Probably that, that's probably a good thing. And if such a talk is not happening now, that would be the, what I said I missed, we missed. So, who else has a question? Yeah, big question. If you feel free to walk up to the mic, if you want to be seen. Journalist. Secret Union, a freelance from Germany. I think you're, you're right. Uh, the Japanese army will be uh, next year, it's not a normal army like the uh, United States or. British or French, uh, but I think well, there is one difference in dealing with the army of Mr. Abe. Mr. Abe doesn't know what uh, European leader ha do uh, ha have a relation to the army. I saw once a, a video, Mr. Abe in front of a, uh, of his troops in an open car, holding a head before his heart and looking very proud and uh, honest to his uh, to his uh, his troops. I think it's in Germany or other European countries, uh, a, a political leader wouldn't do this. I think it shows me, Mr. Abe, he is proud of his army. European leaders don't think they are proud of his army. Army is a, is a thing necessary, but but not, it's not a thing to be to be proud of. And I think this constitutes a relation to the to the army in, a, in Japan in a very different way than it's, it's in, in, in Germany. I, I think if you go to Paris on July 14th, Paris, <laughs> no, I mean, but you're not like that anyway. When you look at the national so what, what the French have added is, you know, in, in the old days only the French army is, was reviewed, but now they bring European armies and former colonial subjects. Yes. To, I mean, the only thing that's missing there is Napoleon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know any Japanese parade by Parisian standards? Yeah. I mean, it's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. The right. Prince also. The British right. also. No, the Queen refused the, military, the trooping of the colors. But if you go to, to Holland, to Sweden, to Norway, they never would do it. Germany is never friendly. Well, Germany is obviously. Of course, Germany is very different. Those are real arms. The Pope, the Vatican. The guard. But it's small fake. It's small fake. Yeah, so sorry. Sorry. I mean, as someone who was born in Paris, I have to mention that frankly, when I look at how they think of the Champs Elysees, and I think, you know, you've got a long way to go. Sorry, I let that be something. I think your story reminds me of President Obama was criticized by the he didn't put his hand on uh, before the national anthem or something. It's an opposite case. No, attitude of leaders should be very careful, of course. Either side, either side. So I think uh, 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 probably uh, because I think Abe, Mr. Abe is uh, responsible for this. Because uh, uh, if other leader like Noda or Hatoyama, probably the media didn't take shot. Probably the other prime minister may do this same gesture, but uh, nobody cares. But if uh, Prime Minister Abe does, oh, watching this, I think uh, the, uh, 
The same thing applied. He got on the plane, the uh, jet plane, uh, self-defense force plane, uh, seven three one. You know, probably if other prime minister get in the plane seven three one, probably media didn't take uh, attention. But seven three one is the infamous uh, unit for the the the, you know, the World War Two, I think, the biological war or the one. Uh, it was not the intention, intentional. That's clear. But uh, unfortunate the timing because you know, uh, just imagine if Abe really wanted to play the seven three one, he would do choose. Oh, I prefer seven three one unit, and I like to kill the many Asian neighbor and uh, get into. I don't think Abe would do that. But uh, coincidence. Some, but uh, sometimes Abe's image was uh, so. Oh, the twisted, I think. Again, again, I, I, again, I, I'm not a big fan of him. Hopefully not. But uh, I don't think uh, Mr. Abe is a serious right-wing conservative who really wanted to challenge current world order. No. He's a strong uh, supporter of uh, the current world order and uh, alliance with the United States. So. That's why, actually, I occasionally criticize his visit to Yasukumishiba. Because he, because of this, I think he tends to be misunderstood. Right? So, uh, so I think, uh, I, again, I, I keep saying I'm not a big fan of Abe. That means that, but I'm defending him. Because uh, uh, the, his attitude was uh, misunderstood somehow. And I, I occasionally criticize him because uh, no, I'm not criticizing uh, Abe's at the attitude because Abe's attitude is really bad. Uh, his attitude would be sometimes a target of a misunderstanding. He should behave uh, 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 wisely. And it seems to me, he, he, uh, according to the current uh, his uh, statement or talk, um, I don't know if anybody uh, read the uh, Washington Post website and the interview by the David Ignatius of uh, the Washington Post columnist. He, he, he's he's uh, the answer to the, his question. Uh, uh, David Ignatius' question was uh, very modest. Like uh, he, again, repeated that he does have no intention to change it past the Japanese government statement, Kono statement, or uh, Murayama statement. He will do not touch. So I think uh, that. That is uh, the very important. Again, um, the good question, I think, uh, the, 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 his move. I, said some, I, I think uh, any national leader should be very careful. Otherwise, some war comes. That's, again, uh, the how to prevent uh, uh, the security dilemma or reassurance is important. That, that's my question. Let, let me follow up on this. I, I have the advantage of sharing this. The Murayama statement exists, and the Kono statement. Uh, Prime Minister could just have said on the 17th anniversary, I will repeat them, and could consistently. Instead, he appointed this committee, uh, which, in a way, it's hard to see what he's going to gain from it, because it focuses attention on this. The fact is that the Prime Minister, prior to returning to office, made statements that are compatible with Morayama. You know, he signed an um, ad in a New Jersey newspaper in 2012 uh, or, uh, as part of a petition organized by Yoshiko Sakurai. And if you go to the web links, it takes you to articles that say there was no Nanjing massacre, that sort of thing. It's, it's very good. The web links are very good. They're in English, in German, in Japanese, whatever. Uh, so why <coughs> did he kind of build this complex machine of a committee to draft a statement, which then has to, then we add this thing in the diet where we say, well, we don't really know what the word aggression means. Then he uses the term sexual trafficking, which of course doesn't tell you who they were trafficked by. So why create this when he didn't have to? Because it seems like putting a, 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 a bullet to your head, you know, putting maybe two or three bullets to increase the chances of winning as opposed to Russian roulette. Uh, so what, what do you think was his logic mm -hmm. in doing all this? Yeah, I think, uh, I don't think uh, any, the, the 
the total logic of this. That logic is a political logic. Some constituency or some supporter really want him to do that. And uh, uh, that's probably the case. So I think uh, that that's a kind of source of a misunderstanding. And uh, Japan is, of course, a democratic country, and the express show, express of freedom is guaranteed. And uh, many different opinions uh, can be expressed. And some conservatives actually express uh, their own uh, uh, interest. And the conservative view somehow is uh, the, a little bit uh, twisted. And uh, uh, twisted because, uh, um, again, uh, probably majority of Japanese actually supporting uh, uh, not not majority, super majority su supporting uh, the world order, world order now. And this world order was possible with uh, the initiative of the United States. That's clear. Japan has been uh, very safe, not because of this Omamori, but U.S.-Japan alliance, for example. I think uh, uh, this kind of things was clearly understood. But at the same time, you know, some kind of people really wanted to have uh, making a statement, of course different view. Some people would say that history revisionist um, things uh, justified what uh, the Japan has done was not so bad, this kind of thing. That's childish, but uh, that, that somehow the many people have the, the incentive to justify what Japan has done, unfortunately. And such a people actually it, uh, have uh, some kind of voice, like uh, uh, the Roma described some of the uh, advisor advertisement in a paper. And uh, that, that's the deep trouble. I think uh, Japan cannot really get over this. And um, you know, that, 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 that is a really shortcomings of uh, Japan as a nation. But uh, no wonder, because uh, it's uh, just 70 years after the end of World War II. It's just 70 years. I think uh, Japan should be the very, I think, uh, the more modest. But, individual cannot be forced to do that. Everybody have a freedom expression. And some frustrated people, frustrated to current life, frustrated with the economic inequality, tend to go to such a kind. That's probably not so different from uh, uh, the nationalist right wing in Europe or any other country too. So, but uh, the trouble is, of course, Japan the past was a clearly potential challenge to the world order in other time, 30s and 40s. And uh, uh, the trouble is that Japan is not trying to change the current world order, apparently. But uh, uh, the some uh, mis misled interpretation over the, I would say, history revisionism is uh, tend to be used, oh, Japan is uh, just uh, trying to change the current world order. That twisted or uh, unfortunate one. Not so easy to uh, have uh, the, the solution. Well, no, clearly it's not so bad things to discuss openly this kind of things. Uh, so we'll have to come and then microphone? No, he has a microphone. You have the microphone outdoors. I'm, I'm, I'm the traffic cop. Okay. Yeah, here and then here, we're alternating some. Right. Takeshi Kawasaki, um, I'm curious, uh, what is the recognition of uh, enemy closet United Nations? Um, in a security community, uh, as well as uh, what do you guess for abe -san? You know, the Japan, that means uh, as a clearly after World War II, there was no big war or any kind of change over status of the, the former enemies, unfortunately. But you know, probably reality is not. Because you know, I don't think Japan is treated as an enemy. I don't think Germany is treated as an enemy. You know, you and enemy cross is just kind of a, a dinosaurs. But of course, you know, it's legal things. It's very difficult to ch change uh, enemy cross. That's it. So uh, if Japan is treated as an enemy, we should change. But uh, unfortunately or fortunately, it's not. So not big consensus among the Japanese and the Germany to change. That should be changed, but it uh, takes a long time, unfortunately. And uh, Japan's uh, desire is more probably the, uh, joining uh, the, uh, the uh, permanent 
P5 uh, with uh, Germany and uh, uh, India and uh, Brazil? Brazil. Brazil, yeah. That was the first flight. Unfortunately, it was not the thing, but uh, we should try again. Enemy cross? Yeah, but it's not serious trouble now. My name is Andre Zimmerman. I'm working for a Swiss chocolate company, so I'm very safe here. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing is about the communication from Prime Minister Abe. One recent term was, for example, used Vaga Hay. And also in that respect, uh, I think it shows again that we have a communication problem in Japan, also with the hawks and the doves. Everybody's taking it too far apart or too much on their side, which means Japan has a communication problem. Now, how can Japan become or play a larger role in Asia, for example, where mediation and communication is so important and Japan seems to be doing so extremely poor when it comes to communication? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you and uh, you are my friend. I try to, I'm trying to fight... Well, that's why we uh, have you. <laughs> I'm trying to fight the, the fight against the right wing and left wing, extreme. You know that's unfortunately, and uh, of course the U.S. has uh, some trouble left wing and right wing. But uh, the more trouble for U.S. is that uh, their communication is uh, so much better. <laughs> Even with a better communication, they have a trouble. <laughs> Japan's case is a uh, poor communication and a trouble. I think uh, uh, that that takes time. But uh, one very important ground is uh, freedom of expression and uh, free discussion. I think uh, probably the worst case in Japan than the US is uh, probably the discussion is uh, more self-restrained or somehow discussion is uh, motivated by emotion. Of course, motivated by emotion is okay, but uh, the rhetoric is uh, very emotional. And of course, education for the conversation. Rhetoric. I think uh, um, the uh, academic writing or rational writing is never seriously taught in the Japanese education. You may be surprised, but well, you may, may be not surprised. Um, <laughs> because uh, Japanese uh, literature or the, uh, the Japanese studies are more literature oriented, shared with emotion. And I remember, I was uh, told to remember Genji Monogatari, that's a poet, the old poet, and the first one, and uh, I'm sure almost all Japanese can remember the very first one, like Gion uh, Shoja uh, no Kane no Oto, Sara Shouju. That's nice to be the, the poet or uh, literature, but no, making a rational rhetoric, that's nothing, right? More emotion. Unfortunately, Japanese language training is more em emotional. So very difficult to tell such a people who educated in the emotional literature uh, background, but tell, oh, you should uh, uh, make uh, your statement more organized and rational and less emotional. Wow, big, big task. That's the case, uh, you, we should uh, restructure our own uh, the language training seriously. Um, by the way, uh, I'm speaking English here. Now, I can talk Japanese in uh, probably similar manner. But uh, before I got education in the U United States, in graduate level, probably my talk was more emotional. I never imagined what I can talk this kind of things. Um, I didn't have a gut to touch to the history recognition issue before, because uh, I'm getting emotional at that time, all the days. But now, I learned somehow the technique to talk with uh, somehow the controversial issue with uh, less emotion and with a more rational mind. So, unfortunately, but, uh, fortunately, I think a uh, Jap Japanese language issue is uh, the reason is simply that Japanese language is shared with the Japanese who shared somehow common <coughs> emotion and uh, and sometimes that tend to forget about the non-Japanese or the people who don't share with a kind of common emotion. I was lucky somehow. I was uh, born in uh, uh, Fukushima and Aizu Wakamatsu who happened to be the enemy of a major administration. 
<laughs> Believe or not, I, my education is a little bit different from the majority of uh, uh, the Japanese. I still don't believe uh, the uh, Meiji administration really has a legitimacy. Sometimes uh, I have some trouble with uh, the people from Yamaguchi Prefecture, such as uh, Mr. Abe. <laughs> that was my education. But uh, fortunately, um, my area is uh, relatively poor than others, but are still getting along with and not seriously discriminated. So, Ah, uh, we don't think uh, in independent like a Scott Trump. Right? <laughs> That's education again. The successful economic uh, e equality. That's the wrong answer. I'm going to what? stay here. Okay. Uh, Nami san, thank you very much for wonderful, you know, insightful discussions that uh, you have created. I belong to the ordinary citizen group, and I must confess that I'm a great supporter to uh, current administration. As I am aging, at the age of 68, I see uh, very weak points of the Japanese, and equally, I see very weak points of the residents of from other world in living in Japan. The, the major problem, that, as I see, is the weakness and quality level of mass media. They are all enemies to Mr. Abe, except, except Sanke. <laughs> Japan Times, who represents to be the Japanese leading English paper, is harassing Mr. Abe, no matter what he says. That's a weakness number one. The equally uh, foreign correspondent club of Tokyo, how many of them can speak Japanese? Nearly 10 to 15%. So they don't understand Japanese. You say the Japanese language is the emotional one. I say it's not. It is a very document-oriented culture that you can dig out the thousand years ago. It is written in there. So if you have the capability of reading all the classic Japanese, everything is possible, and even 120 years ago, everything is documented. That type of thing is missing, and that's another reason why I just bite the what Director Jujarek Sensei said the other day about the Kyushu Daigaku event. I, I was a little bit shocked about the uh, how people, the gaijin reporters, were well, uh, even the best of the best well, most intelligent people just pick up some of the words that they read, easily taken from the media that published abroad or Japan in English. So that's the cross-communication is likeness. And I believe that should be corrected. And the other thing that I may add, one other thing is that Japan is very happy situation right now because the longevity of our administration, Abe, may last two more years. And uh, we are just waiting the stage for administration in the White House that he is leaving. And uh, lots of the time that we are spending together is, is just good to correct all the difficulties and the problems. So what I'd like you to mention and explain is the time frame what will happen in five year time between Japan and the world and all these things, the Asian issue as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please don't understand, misunderstand what I said. I'm not saying the Japanese language is emotional. Mm -hmm. No, no. Japanese are not trained to talk and write without emotion <laughs> or rational. And of course, Jap Jap all language uh, have a rhetoric and uh, uh, with emotion, sometimes good, like literature with emotion is a very important. Sharing emotion is a very important. Japanese is a beautiful language. But uh, Japanese are not trained to the, some, uh, the, the rhetoric which can share the idea with uh, people who don't share the same uh, uh, culture or same background. That's what I, I'm trying to say. And uh, I, I said that I'm not a big fan of Mr. Abe, but I support what Abe is doing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm not emotionally supporting what Mr. Abe said. Sometimes criticize uh, uh, what Abe does, but uh, I'm supporting uh, Mr. Abe's security foreign policy. Yes, I'm a big fan of that sense. I don't criticize. And, uh, uh, but uh, 
of course, I try to the reminding the, the Mr. Abe that Abe, Abe's administration should be very careful for the uh, reassurance issue, very important. And uh, uh, the, the economy is a very key. And you, you, you mentioned your question, five years. Uh, probably the Japan somehow saved with economics. Um, uh, economic uh, theory or economic uh, uh, mechanism, probably not sure. But uh, still, the uh, Japanese economies uh, have a chance to come back. To. That's very important. And that I, we owe Mr. Abe. And the, the big challenge is, of course, Mr. Abe is not a perfect guy who controls everything. As an economy, and the uh, uh, weak point of uh, Mr. Abe is uh, uh, the tackling on the, the budget issue. But uh, no, economic growth and the budget issue cannot be trade off the, in the short term. Uh, it is a trade off short term and cannot be the, uh, well coordinated. So, a uh, big challenge after Mr. Abe uh, is uh, really how to have uh, the sustained growth, sustained economy, and uh, uh, long term health of. Uh, uh, the, the Japanese uh, gov government, uh, the uh, uh, deficit situation, of course, huge deficit we have. So, uh, five years. I really hope the very good, stable uh, the successor uh, uh, would continue to have a very well balance. I think Japan should maintain the regional balance, not to cause uh, some trouble. So. Uh, Japanese uh, sh should continue to improve the, the legal system, uh, alliance system, um, the multilateral security, and the economic uh, growth. Everything should be maintained. And uh, one big success, secret success of Mr. Abe is uh, Mr. Abe stay in uh, uh, the position longer than any other very short lived prime minister. It's serious. One year thing here is uh, too short for doing everything. I think a US uh, leader guaranteed four years, at least. And Japanese uh, Prime Minister cannot be guaranteed. So I think Mr. Abe is, uh, uh, can work uh, longer because, uh, first of all, Abenomics was uh, somehow initially successful and supported. And uh, he has uh, the, somehow the longer time. And the longer time, uh, he has a lot of things he can do that. So that's very important for Mr. Abe. So I really hope successor to Mr. Abe, whichever the party, I think I continue to be the long life of the, uh, the politics. Of course, that is very important. Uh, that's my hope. And uh, five years, of course, that's Tokyo Olympic, after Tokyo Olympic. It's probably the, the world change a lot. Um, in a strategic issue, again, going back to how China continue to grow? How long? Of course, nobody knows. But uh, the, uh, I, I'm not, I don't take uh, some co co collapse, China collapse theory anywhere. It's not coming soon, and that's good thing. So that's going to be a nightmare for the world. But we have to find a way how to make a soft landing of a Chinese economy when China has uh, the come to the point of a uh, limit of uh, economic growth. That's one thing we should be prepared. And uh, the other one is that uh, we should be prepared uh, North Korea. Um, you know, now the US is preoccupied with the uh, Iranian uh, framework. That's, that's very important, of course. You know, Iranian don't have a nuclear uh, weapon yet. But South Korea already 10, 11. Some Korean, um, Korean uh, defense minister says that uh, by 26, Year 2016, they may have a 48 or 6 or something. Why we leave North Korea in <coughs> such a situation? Unfortunately. So we have a lot of things to deal with in the future. Near and uh, midterm, we should be prepared. That's, again, going back to my subject. You know, the uh, multilateral col collaboration, the multilateral framework, and the daily base exchange of uh, the collaboration, cooperation. And uh, uh, more closer communication with China is uh, very important, I think. And uh, uh, I know many good Chinese people who have a good intention to the help their country, serve their country. They knew in the long term. 
And uh, uh, sometimes uh, the, they visited the Japan to run Japan's uh, good system. How to manage a pension? How to manage the disaster relief? How to manage the pollution? We have a lot of room. Unfortunately, in the past few years, I think uh, Japan and uh, China disconnected in that, such a the channel to promote. But uh, we should resume this, I think, and uh, do, do something. But uh, it doesn't mean Japan is uh, changing the security policy. And it's kind of, uh, I think, uh, uh, Tom Friedman described uh, Obama's the new initiative, the Obama doctrine. That's uh, maintain their uh, defense supremacy, but at the same time open to engage. Japan should do the same thing in the region. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Members, I just wanted to ask you about um, um, the multi multilateral institutions you referred to earlier. You talked as well about the AIIB, the uh, New Investment Bank. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of criticism coming out of the United States mm -hmm. in particular on that. I think Forbes have described it as being un un unstrategic, mm -hmm. unconstructive, unintelligent. You know. Uh, and and, and the, the Americans and the Japanese seem to be on the same side. Mm -hmm. Are you not concerned that with regard to secure, security multilateral frameworks, mm -hmm. similar mistakes may be, may be made? I, I saw mm -hmm. Professor Summers in Harvard as well, mm -hmm. very critical of, of mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's uh, yeah. uh, uh, folded here. I, I, of course, the several, there's always some uh, shortcomings. And uh, uh, AIIB, easy to say it's uh, the strategic mistake. I know. Uh, of course, the mistake is uh, the keep happening too. And uh, um, it seems to me it's still the grip is the US and Japan for the regional financial uh, architecture. And uh, AIIB, potentially <coughs> Japan and the US could join. Or uh, for China to manage a stable management for the, the AIIB, they need the US and Japan somehow. Even they don't need the US and Japan, they need a good collaboration with the other part of uh, the world. I think uh, that's a little bit different from a security one. And uh, that's why uh, I'm talking about uh, multilateralism, but I'm not talking about uh, um, all multilateral settings should be replaced uh, instead of uh, existing US uh, have and uh, uh, spoke network of alliance. Uh, US have and spoke is very important. I don't think that could be changed. That's the Tony Abbott, Australian, the 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 uh, prime minister uh, said. You know, okay, it's our and the Asian re in interest, uh, the economic interest to have uh, the joining AIIB, but Australia is uh, the permanent ally of the uh, United States. That's kind of things is uh, very important. I think uh, that's why I think uh, AIIB may be strategic. Mistake. But not not sure so far, and easy to be recovered soon. It's not critical. I, I that's my idea. I'm, of course, again, I'm expert, security expert. I'm not a financial expert. I I'm not so uh, have a confidence over the my confidence. But my instinct said to say, if existing U.S. alliance system is replaced by the unsure multilateral system, that's a big trouble. But you know. Again, if uh, Japan and um, Asia is uh, having a NATO type, that is a big trouble for China if China is not included, creating a security area. So, Victor Chat's suggestion is a very fudgy Asian type. Victor is Asian too. But uh, probably maybe. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, the, we have a concrete system to contain China. That's impossible. But at the same time, we are not so optimistic uh, China would easily uh, adapt themselves to the, the common world interest or uh, rule. May have uh, some time. We need uh, some time. And watch. That's one way we could do that. That kind of wisdom such as unfortunate. Fortunate. Uh, Jose University uh, Institute of Young Studies Researcher. And uh, thank you very much for your um, uh, comments on the security issues. And I have a question about the Okinawa 
Um, now, uh, the confrontation between uh, the local government and the new government, uh, Mr. Onaga, and uh, Mr. Suga, and others, and the new government. And, and do you see any possible exit of this uh, kind of situation? Because you know, it's really important in front of China. Um, well, harsh confrontation is going on. And it's not a very good uh, situation for uh, alliance. The image of alliance <coughs> is being damaged, I think. So, what, what's your view? I think uh, Okinawa question is a very, very complicated part. I've been watching and I've been somehow in involved in Okinawa question since uh, 1995, when uh, the very tragedy of uh, the the, the schoolgirls are raped by the American uh, the military personnel, and uh, at that time, uh, Japan and the U.S. agreed to the the return of a Stemma Air Station, 1995. And now, to 2015, uh, 20 sorry, 20 years Stemma there. Yeah. So the reason is uh, simply this situation is a little bit complicated. One thing. And uh, Okinawa's uh, local politics is uh, unique. And uh, uh, I kind of share the, uh, the people in Okinawa in the historically and don't have as confidence over the major majority of central government too, um, in the history. They're a little bit different to me, like uh, myself too. So, you know, uh, by the way, the people from my home country, Aizu, and the people in Okinawa are get, getting along with it. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, but at the same time, I don't think, uh, like us, Okinawa is a seeking an independent. I don't think so. Okinawa is, a, Okinawa is a part of Japan, and Okinawa, the people, the Japanese people, of course, shape. And uh, the, the solution should be somehow the very com complex. And the uh, only possible solution is uh, with a good communication between the Japanese central government and the uh, Okinawa's people, the government. But, uh, cannot be open sometimes, quite open. Because again, the, the situation surrounding Okinawa, especially in Okinawa people, is uh, emotional, one thing. I, mean, I don't blame emotional, they have a reason to be emotional. Um, and that's one thing, cool, quiet, and somehow pragmatic talk between Japanese governments and Okinawa side. But sometimes government government is a, it doesn't go anywhere. Sometimes they need a very good uh, good communication behind the scenes. And also good communication between Japanese government and the US government. And the US government should be the very good manager to the, the four forces and the militaries, and uh, sometimes a uh, Congress, who sometimes represents military. Wow, very complex, right? So we should be very patient and try to contain the very negative things. And uh, uh, if any possible solution pragmatic, we should continue to. But if uh, such a solution is a really faith to be the big, big trouble, we have, we need to have a courage, courage to change, because that's difficult. difficult. Um, probably, I, um, when uh, uh, Prime Minister Hatoyama tried to change the game, uh, I was speaking to the current existing plan. I thought it was a shortcut to reduce uh, the burden of Okinawan people. And also creating uh, somehow trust between uh, Japan and the Japanese government and the US government. Probably easier to reduce uh, more uh, the uh, mili uh, military base without uh, hurting uh, regional stability. Now, the situation is a little bit difficult. I'm so confident current plan is good or not. But I'm, I'm still the keep recommending that if possible, uh, both Japanese government and the US government and the Okinawan local government should work on the current plan. The reason is, uh, of course, the FEMA is so dangerous. And uh, uh, the, the relocation uh, place, uh, Henoko, is not so dangerous because it's not surrounded by the, the uh, house. Of course, uh, not so happy plan for the people in Okinawa. But one 
uh, less worst solution, or second best, third best, but less worst solution. Not sure. It's really up to the what kind of uh, politics and interaction so far. But uh, clearly, I, I should recommend that any part of the uh, US or Japanese government or Okinawan uh, local government, prefecture government, need a communication. Doesn't have to be open, quiet. In the past history, I'm watching the case. Only successful case negotiation came from a quiet, sincere negotiation. That's very important. That's what, what I can. You hand, you hand, oh, so you, and I think it's, you have a penultimate question. Uh, hello, my name is Mu Hui, I'm from China, and uh, thank you for, for your uh, lecture and your interpretation and uh, description of Abe himself and uh, his policy is quite different from what I read from my <laughs> country's newspaper every day. And uh, I'm doing my research in, in uh, PhD research in Todai, mm -hmm. and uh, my research dealing with uh, Northeast Asia, mm -hmm. multilateral cooperation, mm -hmm. especially the Korea, China, and Japan. Mm -hmm. And my question is about, uh, you have been also mentioned a little about uh, non-traditional security mm -hmm. issues. And I didn't really see the multilateral uh, security uh, cooperation mm -hmm. among China, Japan, and Korea mm -hmm. in traditional uh, security areas, but uh, in terms of the non-traditional, there are some, like mm -hmm. in the ASEAN plus three and AP and the ARF. My question is, uh, do you think these measures, these efforts, really count or really contribute mm -hmm. uh, to the confidence building or trust building process among the third countries or in this region? If you think so, how is, going to, uh, how is it going to be possible, going to be happen? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, uh, by the way, the Today, my talk, this kind of a multilateralism would be very important for the region. Actually, I, I need to, I really want to share this idea with uh, Chinese friends, Chinese people. So, occasionally, I, have, I give a lecture in uh, the university in, uh, in, in, uh, in Beijing. I almost the same uh, talk today uh, to the Beijing University the earlier this year. Um, I think uh, uh, the future figure of course, nobody knows, but uh, we could create a uh, potentially non-traditional area. We could have easier cooperation, collaboration mechanism. That's very good step to create some confidence building. You know, confidence building measure is uh, now easy to say, not so easy to attain. But uh, non-traditional security area, relatively easy. I think, uh, uh, for example, already the, some military exercise targeting to the, uh, the disaster relief or something. That huge nation in the region joined. And uh, that, that was a very uh, the promising area. And of course, fortunately, unfortunately, we have a lot of a future travel by the natural disaster. Nobody can escape. So I think a big incident. So uh, I'm this sense sense I'm, I'm positive to create and really wanted to create this the habit of co cooperation to prevent the worst case and uh, create more cooperation uh, the, uh, the architecture or multilateral structure and China with a strong leader uh, China can do more I am mean, sure China has contributed a lot to the anti piracy uh, the activity or UN sponsored peace keep operation I think China has a huge of potential in now experience too. So it would be nice to do more collaboration. Unfortunately, Japan-China relation is not so good now, but I, the, in the future, the potential of Japan-China may create some initiative to the regional architecture for the non-traditional security. Let me ask the last question. I'm sorry I have to get out of the room, but you know, we, we don't have Article 9 at Temple, so I have to deal with <laughs> uh, And Abe is going to Washington. And it's a question that's based on the Togo event that Oshima gave. Almost all of the LDP politicians' friends in the US are Republicans, as Glenn pointed out. Uh, in some cases, it makes sense to have friends in only one party if a party is always in power. Mm -hmm. uh, in the US, you know that in the next 20 years, 
of the Democrats. At one point, we'll probably get part of the House of the Senate. That will be the, well, there's already a Democratic president. There may be a Republican one, a Democrat afterwards. I mean, you know that in the US, you need to cultivate both parties because over the long run, at one point, one of them will be in power. Uh, why do you think the LDP has done this? I would have asked, of course, the other question to do with why the US Embassy had, didn't know anybody in the DPJ. That's another good question to ask. Uh, and I, I, I think, no, seriously, that, but I, I will focus on this one. Well, why do you think they didn't understand that it makes sense to cultivate both sides of the aisle? They do. They do. So um, I'm not so worried about the Democrats continue to have uh, the the um, the, uh, the government the, the next day election. Of um, I explained to the Japanese guy, oh, we don't have to worry about either Republican and Democrats have a government party. Uh, I think uh, the same thing apply, I hope, for the Japanese case. I think the US Embassy has created a good relation with uh, the DPJ, too. And uh, even they are frustrated with Hatoyama, but still, um, amazingly, Ambassador Ruth was uh, patient enough to get along with Mr. Hatoyama, for example. Be because, you know, I think according to my friend in the US government, says that it's nice to have a, the maintaining a good alliance and partnership with a different government, different party. That's very important. I think, that, again, I told you, Japan uh, had an initiative for the, the positive security role in the DPJ government, and uh, Mr. Abe continued. I think that's more strong allied partner. Same thing applied to the Japan enjoyed the both, the good alliance with uh, uh, the Republican and Democrat. And in the past, of course, Japan enjoyed a close alliance. Um, some trouble was happening. Uh, the, it's uh, the very bad uh, the trade disputes, 80s and 90s. That time, Democrats tend to be harsh against Japan. But even that, at that time, the uh, Clinton administration, I think in 1995, uh, they had a tragic uh, one, I already talked But it was a uh, Clinton administration who initiated uh, the uh, strong security tie between Japan and the United States. And many experts worked there. They're still surviving in Washington and may take uh, some position in uh, the uh, Democrat next government. Uh, um, um, easy to say the card campaign, but not only card, but many. Well, thank you very much, Nabe-san.